would like to welcome you to this Tuesday edition of the St. Mark Spark. It is a joy to be together with you. I apologize a little bit for our delay, 10 minute delay in getting this out, but I pray that God's blessing is with you. And and I was thinking about what I wanted to, to say today. And normally what we do with the spark is we go to the daily lectionary. We read a little bit either from the psalm or from an epistle or, or the gospel. And we talk about something that we can learn, something that we can glean from that. I was thinking about that. And then it occurred to me that we're in a very interesting day in history. Tomorrow is Inauguration Day in Washington, D.C., Yesterday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And here we are in between these two very, very important days in the life of our country, the life of our faith, the life of our shared walk together. And so instead of, of necessarily going to the specific scripture, I'll share a couple of things with you. The first thing really to emphasize is something I struggle with is the... Uh, idea that we just celebrate one day for civil rights just one day for martin luther king jr and and you see on social media and i'm not here to castigate anybody for putting up a martin luther king jr quote i've done that plenty of times but you know it's important to remember that it's not just a day if we're not willing to live out what that quote was if we're not willing to to let our lives exude what that sentiment was expressed in the Martin Luther King saying or book or sermon or what have you, then really we're lost. Really we're just putting up window dressing on our lives. We're trying to look the part. Now I understand with politicians, I understand with many people, looking the part is the ultimate goal. Jesus had stern warnings against people who are more interested in looking the part people who Jesus described as whitewashed tombs, those who, who might look good on the outside, but inside they were decayed, they were dying, they were dead. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. And this means, I believe, that we have to pay attention to MLK Day, certainly, but also we have to live out whatever those words that we post. We have to live out those quotes that we love. So the March on Washington, everyone is likely familiar with the I Have a Dream speech. Not everyone would know the story that that was not originally the speech that King was going to deliver that day. In fact, it was, I think, Mahalia Jackson who had uh, had talked to him and shouted to him, Martin, tell him about the dream. Tell him about the dream. He had given this speech, I believe it was in Cobo Hall in downtown Detroit, like three months earlier. And so this was a greatest hits. This was a re-recitation, a re-delivery uh, re of that great speech. There's so many things also, though, that happened that day that we are not fully aware, that we don't fully take to heart. King was certainly the one who, who gave that incredible speech, but he was not the only person who gave a speech that day. There were other people that we know that gave speeches. We know, we hear about folks uh, that were involved in the civil rights movement, whether they be John Lewis or others. I want to read just a brief. This is from Eugene Carson Blake. Uh, Eugene Carson Blake is, is a hero of mine. Uh, he was a Presbyterian pastor. He was uh, the leader of the National Council of Churches, also general secretary of the uh, the World Council of Churches, I believe was uh, the moderator or state of clerk of the General Assembly of, of the church. And Eugene Carson Blake, I did not know this until literally about five minutes ago. He's from St. Louis. And so I have to figure out where he went to high school. I have to do a little bit more research. But he was involved in organizing the March on Washington, the March for Jobs. A lot of people forget about that. And, and Blake, Reverend Blake, gave a speech that speech. You'll see him in some of the pictures. You don't can't really find a whole lot of video of him, and that's okay. But he said these words from the white mainline perspective, from the white mainline church. And he said these words, we came to the march behind and with those amazing, amazingly able leaders of the Negro Americans who, to the shame of almost every white American, have alone and without us mirrored the suffering of the cross of Jesus Christ. They have offered their bodies to arrest and violence, to hurt and indignity of fire hoses and dogs, 
of derision and poverty, and some to death for this just cause. We come. Late we come. But we come to present ourselves, our souls, and our bodies to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. I was am struck by these words. I think they were true in 1963. I think they're true in 2021. We come, and hopefully we are coming. Hopefully we are paying attention to these injustices, paying attention to to uh, different forms of justice for different people in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our cities, in our country, and in our world. Hopefully we have been able to see with clear eyes we come, but also recognize we come late to the party. We come late as white folk to be a part of this. We come we are reminded not to try to take up the mantle of leadership, but to take up the servant's heart of listening, the servant's hearts of walking alongside, the servant's heart of saying, how can we help to lift up? We are not called to be in charge of this movement because there are folks who have been in charge of this. There are folks, as Eugene Carson Blake said, who have suffered their bodies with arrest and violence and hurt and indignity with fire hoses turned on them and, and dogs let loose on them of derision and poverty and some, yes, even some to death. We come and we come late. Part of coming late then requires some level of confession. Some level of, uh, shame is probably not the word, but conviction that we should have done more and we should have done more sooner. So I was thinking about Eugene Carson Blake. I was thinking about, about this Presbyterian pastor and his words in Washington, D.C. in 1963. And then I, I thought also about another famous Presbyterian as we look forward to tomorrow for the inauguration. As uh, I've, I was telling people, I think I've watched every inauguration since either 1980 or 1984. There are people who were inaugurated that I have voted for and there are people who have been inaugurated that I have not. I think it is important to participate. I think it's important to listen. And hopefully these words are inspiring. But the other Presbyterian I want to, to read from, and this is going to be a long prayer to close us out, it is from Peter Marshall. Some of you will remember maybe an old movie, an old book that's called A Man Named Peter, A Man Called Peter. And uh, this was a Scottish man who became in the United States and became a Presbyterian minister. And he was the chaplain in the capital. And he wrote these words, these words about confession. He said, Our Father, bring to the remembrance of your people your ancient timed honored promise. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear heal their land. We, this company of your people assembled, would begin now to meet the conditions that will enable you to fulfill your promise. May all of America come to understand that right living alone exalts a nation, that only in your will can peace and joy be found. But Lord, this land cannot be righteous unless her people are righteous. And we here gathered are part of America. We know that the world cannot be changed until the hearts of men and women are changed. Our hearts need to be changed. We therefore confess to you that wrong ideals and sinful living have cut us off from you. We have been greedy. We have sought to hide behind barricades of selfishness. Shackles, ha shackles have imprisoned the great heart of America. We have tried to isolate ourselves from the bleeding wounds of a blundering world. In our self-sufficiency, we have not sought your help. We have held conferences and ignored you completely. We have disguised selfishness as patriotism, our arrogance masqueraded as pride. We have fritted away time and opportunities while the world 
bled. Our ambitions have blinded us to opportunities. We have bickered in factory and business and sought to solve our differences only through self-interest. Lord God of hosts, forgive us. O oh God, by your guidance and your power, may our beloved land once again become God's one country, a nation contrite in heart, confessing her sins, a nation keenly sensitive to all the unresolved injustice and wrong still in our midst. Hear this our prayer, and grant that we may confidently expect to see it answered in our time. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Late. Late we come, but we come. Late we come in the midst of so many other people bearing the burden, bearing the workload, but we come. We come not in pride, but we come with confession. We come with the acknowledgement of what we have done and what we have left undone. I pray that of Eugene Carson Blake, the words right here of Peter Marshall, they might be a blessing to you, but also that they might be a conviction to you as they are to me, and that there might be a conviction in our nation, in our hearts, but in our nation to confess where we are wrong, to seek God's will. We might be late, but we are still invited to come. I pray God's blessing on you as we continue to seek to live out our call for social justice, as we seek to live out our call to live in this participatory democracy, that we don't ever claim rights without also owning up to our responsibilities. I pray God's blessing as you seek to follow Jesus more closely this day. May you be so close that his dust gets on your yourself. It is in God's name things. And may God be with you.